the new update, we got a lot of new exciting features and with new features comes new settings. So in this video, I'm gonna go over all of the settings, what they do and what I would recommend doing with them. So to get to your settings, you're gonna press that middle button up here. You may be in modes down here to the left. You're gonna to wanna to go to the right to settings. So this is gonna be our settings. I'm gonna go over all of these settings. I'm not gonna go over these drop down menus. I've made other videos about that. You could check that out. We're just going over the settings. So audio devices, this is gonna control where the audio comes out and where the audio comes in. And if you have a controller, um, a cool feature is you could turn on turn on this setting and it has the output gonna use the speakers on the iPad. This is great for if you just wanna practice or set cue points and stuff like that but the rest of your main output is gonna be here. So I just connected my JBL Pulse 3 and you could see it in there, but then if there's no Bluetooth, and then if there's no Bluetooth speaker connected, you'll see it there. Uh, this is good for when you're DJing with controllers, uh, with controllers, with TVs and stuff. If you're trying to get the, the output to come out of the speakers and it comes out of the TV or it's coming out in somewhere else, come to the main output and you could adjust it. That should be, it should, it should be the speakers that are facing the audience is what you want the main output to be. be. Pre-cueing. So if your controller has pre-cueing, that's one thing. But if it doesn't, you could use a headphone splitter and have a DJ professionally with headphones and your and just your iPad with no con with no controller. So that's split output booth. If your controller has uh, has the capacity for to connect a booth output, you will find it here. And then this is so you can have a speaker facing you. Uh, a lot of professional DJs will have a booth speaker and it's a speaker facing you while the other speakers are facing the audience. So you could hear the exact frequencies that the audience is hearing so you can get your mixes better. You don't have to worry about that if you're a beginner and you're only gonna do like small gigs like birthday parties. But once you start doing more professional gigs, you might wanna think of adding a booth speaker. Microphone, if your, microphone ha if your controller has a microphone port, you could use that or you could use the microphone on your device, or you could test out plugging in a microphone directly into your iPad or using a mixer. Then you could do mixer mode to external. I'll talk about that in a more advanced video. Let's keep it moving. General, start playback, turn this off. This is super annoying. When it's on, every time you load up a song, it starts playing immediately. I like to decide when I wanna play the song. Uh, if you have used other softwares or you're used to this on the way that you're DJing, then it's fine. You can leave this feature on. I have nothing against the feature. I just personally don't like using it. Protect Active Deck. This is a great safety feature. I would recommend leaving this on. So this deck over here, the deck on the right is active playing a song. If I go to load up another song, We get this notification. You're about to load a song onto an active deck. Do you want to proceed? So this protects you from doing the one of the worst DJ mistakes, and that is a tomato. When you're playing music, everyone's having a good time, and then you do something on the wrong deck by accident, and the music stops. But if you did want to load it, you could press load, but you're probably going to want to press cancel. Range, tempo range. This is another place where you could adjust the tempo range. I would recommend leaving it at 16 to 25. If you do 75, it's really hard to get the exact BPM. If you do like eight or 10, then it's hard to do big BPM transitions. I found that 16 or 25 works perfectly, but you don't have to use your settings. You could find that over here by the BPM. Start play, it may have your start play to be a little bit. I would recommend turn that off. It makes it build RPMs when you start the track. So at four seconds, It'll slowly build RPMs just like a record was getting up to speed. I find it to be annoying, so I just leave that on zero. Unless you're doing like a DJ trick where you're going from a big BPM to a small BPM or vice versa, and you might want to use the sound, crossfader curve. You could adjust it if you're used to doing that in other softwares. I just leave it at default. EQ type classic. You could put it on isolator if you want. You could adjust the neural mix. This will adjust the resonance sound when you apply a filter. So it's like that whoosh sound. Um, I think it sounds cool on high. If you want to put it on low, you can. FX routing post fader. That'll that allows you to do like echo outs, and it's how you're probably used to using 
the effects, so with an echo. And then you still hear the echo, so you're going to want to keep that on for your effects, most likely. Auto gain, this is very important. If you're, if you're, if you're coming from different softwares or you use CDJs, you're probably used to adjusting the gain almost every track that you load. In this software, the gain control are these really hard to use knobs. But that's okay because this app has an amazing auto gain feature. So when you load up a song, it's going to change the gain. So look over here. It adjusted the gain depending on what song it is. And like I said with the gain, you could have the gain knob on MIDI controllers operate independently from the gain knobs on the screen. That might make it easier if you want to manually adjust the gain on your controller. You could switch to mono output. Audio limiter, this is another safety feature that helps you not destroy people's speakers. And then the headphone pre-select. When you have your headphones connected in split output mode or if you're using a controller, it will automatically select which side you hear the headphones on based on what track has volume. So if there's volume on the right, you'll hear the headphones on the left and then vice versa. It It's a really good feature. I would recommend using it. And it's really advanced. It's not just the crossfader. It's the volume faders too. Library, this is where you can log out of your streaming service, adjust some features in the library. Not Nothing too much here, except I like to show the artwork. So if you look at these cue points, you could do low contrast, little arrow. I like the high contrast. I think it's easier to see and it looks cool. You could change your start cue button. So right now I have just cue. So you choose a spot in the song. And your cue's there. You choose another spot, press Q, and it's in a different spot. Some controllers and softwares have this. Other controllers and softwares have it this way. So you have a set and a jump. So now I'm going to choose where it is, set, and then the jump button will jump back there. And then if you want to set a new one, you press set again. So it's up to you. I think it's cool just having the one button. Jog wheels. They're, they With the update, now you can see the vinyl in pro mode with the jog wheels. But if you don't want that, you could do extended, which I would recommend it. All, these three top ones, compact, dark, compact, light, and extended, will show information on the jog wheels like a lot of softwares and hardware have. You have your BPM, the amount of BPM you changed, uh, how far along you're in the song, how much you have left. Very important information. So there's a dark, there's a light one, depending on which type of lighting environment you're in. I would just leave it on extended. You get the biggest surface area for scratching and doing DJ tricks. You could add the tape marker to your vinyl. You could show full artwork, or you could just show the label. And then you could have minute marker markers and BPM change regions on your waveforms if you want. Advanced, I really wouldn't change anything here. I'm going to get back to MIDI devices. I want to show you some of the extras. Ableton Link. You could connect multiple devices and multiple softwares at the same time. Like if you DJ with a band or something, or you just want to use other softwares like a looper or a beat making software. You could see your version history. You could contact support. And then you could get a full user manual. I've read this multiple times. Uh, I suggest you take a couple hours um, on a day and read the whole user manual to know about the whole software. Or you could just watch my video. So back to MIDI devices. This is where you're going to go to adjust your settings on your controllers and devices. So crossfade and cutting mode is good. As soon as you move the crossfader, it's going to cut the crossfader in the software. Invert crossfader, it's just going to invert it. Odorized controller, instant start. This is where you can connect your Bluetooth controller. So I have the control mix selected. And then if you press the controller, this is where you're going to be able to map your controller. And if you want to learn how to map your controller in DJ Pro, check out this video over here. Thank you.